time. So today it's an honor and privilege to have a very interesting and engaging speaker. I would let her introduce herself and say what she does. And after that, we get our journey started, okay? So sit in tight. If you have any questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat. If not, we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the conversation. Uh, but our conversation today is about enabling ecosystems. And with us on the call, I want to introduce Linda to actually come and introduce herself and give a little short statement about herself. And then we get started. Is that okay? Good, Linda, you have the mic. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Eric. And thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm happy to talk and discuss with you about ecosystem enablers, enablement, and how we can all um, yeah, get together to um, yeah, raise uh, or grow ecosystems that help startups, businesses, but also individuals to, to grow and to be a part of our of a transformation of um, a sustainable society. So happy to be here. Um, yeah, my name is Linda Kapper. I'm based in Frankfurt. Germany and I'm working for the Impact Festival. I'm project lead and uh, specifically responsible for all topics around strategy, sales and partnerships. Um, and we are basically a project within Neosphere. Neosphere is an innovation unit. It's a 100% subsidiary of the Commerzbank in Germany. And um, we are basically um, trying to, on the one hand, invest in startups in um, the topics of financial technology, but also in, um, the top on the topic of impact, ESG, sustainability. And then on the other hand, um, we are trying to look out for trends, discourses, projects, topics that are relevant at the moment um, and think about how can we build a business out of that that um, would like bring our society forward. And um, yeah, one project is the Impact Festival with which we'd like to connect and basically build an ecosystem, a community and network um, of everyone basically who is involved in a sustainable transformation of our economy, meaning startups, scale-ups that have an innovation, um, that have a product or service that is innovative, and we want to bring them together with established corporates that, uh, for example, face challenges that they cannot solve on their own. And on the other hand, with investors, because we, of course, um, know and see the need that more monetary resources have to um, be flowing into this uh, area. So this is basically what we try to um, do with the Impact Festival. It's a B2B community. It's an, ev an event. Um, uh, we have stages, workshops, masterclasses, um, and it's um, also kind of like a trade fair, but with, I'd say, like the, the festival character. So this is basically what we're doing with um, the Impact Festival. And um, I formally studied international development studies. Um, and I worked for the Center for Industry and Sustainability, also in the field of climate, climate change, sustainability, um, coordinating also a network that um, consisted of coaches going into, color, um, into corporates, coaching um, around change management and how to be more innovative, more disruptive. Um, yeah, that's basically what I did before. And yeah, I'm happy to, to dive into the questions and the discussion today. Excellent. Now, uh, top of my mind, the first question that crosses my mind, because we talk about enabling ecosystems, um, they're definitely critical elements that are necessary for business, or for example, ecosystem enablers to, to look out for in startups. Um, so my first question to you is, what are the top three critical elements in a business that ecosystem enablers like yourselves look out for yeah. in startups? It's a, it's a good question. Um, I think it, of course, it depends a bit on the context, but in the context that we are in ourselves of um, the Impact Festival, um, and also, yeah, probably it's also like general that, of course, you should know what you can do and what you can't. I think that is a, vi a vital point for everyone that you're then engaging with. 
you have to be able to articulate, I can do that, but I can't do something else. And I think coming from that is um, a second important point. Um, what are you looking for? So others, and in this case, ecosystem enablers actually understand what are your expectations and your aims and therefore have a better understanding of what to provide or how to answer your need. Because, I mean, I think one of the overall questions or thoughts around the session were also where are like challenges between ecosystem enablers and startups or individuals that are coming into these ecosystems. So I think it's really vital to have a good understanding of each other. What can we give as ecosystem enablers? What do we provide? And on the other way around, what, um, what do you actually need? So I think there's still probably room for, for more information flowing here so that there is a better communication and understanding. Um, and then I think, and that is probably the context of the Impact Festival, because we are very concerned around the whole topic um, of sustainable transformation. Um, so we look for um, businesses that have a systemic approach. So um, that you, if you're talking about um, digitalization or sustainability, that you not only have that in your specific product or service, but that it's like intrinsically throughout your business. So it's very um, a systemic approach how um, your whole business concept um, is. So this is a vital part for us. And then I guess, and that's probably also something that um, will then be important, an uh, important point throughout all questions in the session, um, is an openness to not like clinch to your own thoughts and team members, but to be open to collaborate and um, to be open to um, yeah talk to competitors or you think that they are competitors, but actually they could, uh, if you open up, they could actually help you evolve or to work together uh, because you maybe have the same goal or the same target group. Interesting, collaboration, it seems to be a major thing in there because it's a lot <laughs> of interactions across. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So definitely collaborations bring about opportunities. Uh, um, so um, another question. Um, when it comes to opportunities, uh, what opportunities exist for entrepreneurs uh, who connect with ecosystem hubs um, and enablers such as yourself? Um, what does opportunities look like? Yeah, mm, I think, um, or in this term, I understand opportunities also as like benefit, but yeah, also opportunities that bring you forward. Um, I mean, in general, I think ecosystems allow for a, like a very fast flow of information, resources, help, um, um, but also like fast flow of talent. And so you can, as an entrepreneur, as a young business, you can, I think, really fast find um, what you're looking for or the, um, um, a solution for your need. Uh, but I also think um, that it really depends on the ecosystem or the form of the enabler. I mean, mm. I think there are different definitions, definitions probably what you understand, what, is, what an ecosystem enabler is um, or what not. I mean, um, we as the Impact Festival are or we think that we are an ecosystem enabler through the work that we do, that we provide kind of like room and space and a platform for people to connect and match and um, to spark this collaboration. Um, but I mean, there are also like um, incubators, the organizations that are designed to accelerate um, specifically the growth in terms of capital, etc. cetera, um, but also give you, for example, office space or training um, with the aim that you're self-supporting in the end. Or I think a bit of a more innovative or newer form of these incubators are hubs, innovation hubs that are um, probably are all of the uh, what I've just said, but also um, they are more focused on on this kind of collaboration perspective or of the concept of open innovation. So you're coming together, you have this room, you have, you're bringing different perspectives, diversity um, into a room, which of course um, sparks this kind of innovative ideas and solutions that we are looking for. So I think it also, there are a lot of um, different opportunities and benefits depending on the ecosystem enabler that you are working with or that you are in, but um, Coming more back to the question, I think uh, more in general, the uh, ecosystem enablers have the possibility and the opportunity to nurture um, this kind of enabling environment. And um, at the same time, it's kind of like ecosystems are often 
kind of like a nexus point where different um, agents come together, like the startup community, like the private sector, um, but also then established corporates, um, etc. So I think it's um, that structure kind of creates um, a great space to get out of your own box and think outside of it. Hope that so I like the answers. idea. <laughs> no, no, it's it's interesting. There's a, there's a lot of that that you said. So thinking outside the box is what what actually allows someone to to actually see the opportunities. Because many of the times we go in with this focus that this is mm. the only thing we want to get out of an experience. But you need to have like an attitude of let me leave a little bit empty in my glass so I can fill up. <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's innate with entrepreneurs. We. We go for a conference, we're looking for investors, for example, we're looking for investment opportunities. And probably what we're looking for can be sorted out through a partnership or a collaboration, yeah. yeah? And probably somebody here has a market that if you just engage with that person, you may not even need that funding because just the operations and being able to operate in that market can actually give you the funds you're looking for to sustain your business. So it's, it's it, I agree, definitely. It's about thinking outside the box and having an open mindset. Okay. Um, so talking about collaborations again and partnerships, uh, <laughs> I don't think we can ever exhaust this, but could you, could you just elaborate more on, on the importance of this, um, this ecosystem collaboration and partnerships? Yeah. Yeah, definitely I can. Uh, I totally agree because it's a, a, a broad topic and uh, probably that's um, uh, for us as the Impact Festival a very important topic because um, partnerships, collaborations are basically the most important part of our vision and our aim of the Impact Festival. It's on the one hand our vision for our work, um, how we work. We are working with a lot of different partners. We work with sponsoring partners that um, basically bring in their monetary resources, their money that the Impact Festival makes it makes it basically possible. Then we have networking partners where we see um, ah, we have the same target group or the same um, network. Why not share it and see what comes out of it? Or why not and support each other with um, uh, the same vision that we all have? And then we have or we work with different partnerships with initiatives and individual people that um, yeah, basically want to support with their ideas, their expertise, their ecosystem. So for us, it works quite well to work within these kind of collaborations and partnerships. So um, yeah, that's, I think, why it is a very important point for us, but also on a higher level kind of, um, we work for the SDGs. So especially SDG 17, Partnerships for the Goals. Um, and I think it's described like um, global partnerships are needed um, to bring together like government, civil society, etc., cetera, um, and other actors to mobilize all resources that we have because we will otherwise not be able to achieve all the other SDGs. So um, this is kind of the framework that we are, uh, that we are working under and that we're working towards. And um, yeah, it will be impossible to achieve these goals uh, without accelerating the private sector and the collective action by different businesses. Um, so we think that if you only work as an individual company, I mean, on these goals that is of course necessary, but it won't be sufficient to like really transform a whole industry, a whole economy, a whole society that we are all living in. So we do think that collaboration and partnerships are, are essential here. And I mean, I, I can assume, or it may be that you're not in the field with your business specifically um, in the field of sustainability, um, but in my perspective, trend topics such as sustainability and digitalization, et cetera, are um, yeah, very universal. And I think that it will be as relevant for um, their business as it will be for your or any business um, going into the future because there is so, so many it influences a lot. I mean, I'm not sure, of course, I can only speak for Germany or for Europe, the perspective that I have from that point of view, but um, there are a lot of political regulations that are coming now that um, will, of course, influence how you can 
build your business or how you can make business in the future in terms of um, social policies in your business, but also environmental regulations. I only know the German word Lieferkettengesetz, it's like a supply chain regulation, um, something like that. So I think um, this will concern um, at some point every business. So um, I think in the end, it, um, this is also applicable for, for any business that uh, or startup at the moment. So um, yeah, I think you will probably come across a lot of like um, obstacles as well in how in doing your business or making your business more sustainable, market failures, governance gaps, etc. But I think partnerships and collaborations can then also play a vital role in overcoming these obstacles. And um, I think they they can be important in, in, in this concern as well. And then I think maybe just some direct benefits, basically, um, multiple act actors always bring in complementary resources, complementary knowledge, um, complementary data that you can share. Um, so if you combine these different perspectives, normally you have more in the end. Um, and partner ecosystems, of course, also create um, yeah, opportunities for building new solutions because you have this diversity in, of perspectives. And because you can like think in new ways, um, for example, with the Impact Festival, and when we like started, it was more, okay, we have sponsoring partnerships that give us money and we have network partnerships. We can like, they, in best case, they bring guests, <laughs> but it's so much more than that. And we discovered that it's just like talking to so many different people. So now we do cross selling, um, we uh, or co selling. We grew can grow our revenue through that, or we reach new audiences because we can be part of their marketing campaigns, or we can share our inputs with them and they share with their network, and again and again. Um, and we do yeah a lot of co-marketing. Um, we do events together with other partners. So we say, okay, we have maybe the personal resources, you have a budget and you have a social media expert or so. And so you can like um, accumulate different um, yeah, know-how that you bring in, um, which yeah makes makes partnerships very important um, in yeah, open innovation in uh, growing your business in that regard as well. Awesome. Just based on that question, I know there are other experts from different ecosystems. Uh, would somebody just like to drop in a comment about that? Um, I think it was a lot of it, very valuable what she said, <laughs> but she mentioned at some point that she's, she's speaking from a German perspective. Um, do we have anybody from the African ecosystems enabler who would like to just give a little perspective on that aspect of, 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 um, of, of partnerships and strategic partners, yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, okay. Yeah. Uh, Eric, I think we're meeting, like we've, met, uh, we've met before. <laughs> yes, so. we have. Mark Kevin, yes, we have. Yeah. Um, hello, Linda. Um, great initiative you 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 you're running over there in um, in, in Germany. Um, I am based in in Johannesburg, um, South Africa, and, and um, um, I mean, I could call myself an ecosystem um, enabler, a builder, um, really because I I strongly believe in the work that um, that ecosystem enablers or ecosystem builders do. Uh, but we gotta be, we have to be uh, um, as brutally as honest as possible as we can uh, for the context of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in, this, in the ecosystem business for the last seven plus um, um, years. And this is a term uh, that are still quite new within the continent. And if we do not, if we do not break that down, and and, and 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 then we we would definitely be wasting so much of the content that we're receiving from you and what um, impact has been has been delivering all along. And um, again, impact. Thank you so much for creating initiative and platform like this to share conversation with people like Linda and everyone else um, on the platform. Um, Africa is still very new in when it comes to 
uh, to ecosystem building, even mm -hmm. to the world startup, even to the world innovation ecosystem, or entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, and, 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 and so we still learn, we learn a lot from the West, from the US and from, and from, from Asia. And one of my, one of the key roles that I play, and that's why Set Up a Startup was formed. Set Up a Startup was born as a movement to, for entrepreneurship education and, 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 and innovation, entrepreneurship ecosystem development across um, uh, the continent. Some of us who have been so passionate about, about, about solving the, 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 the Africa problem using mm -hmm. technology uh, or an, uh, entrepreneurship. Some of us who have been so fortunate to, to have, you know, shared so much light on so many stages. And I know I've had the opportunity to speak across um, the continent, across 29 countries in Africa and beyond, um, um, uh, US and Asia, we've seen the power of ecosystem building. You know, we've seen the power of partnership and collaboration. But trust me, it's still, we, still, we still struggle. We still figure mm -hmm. out what, what partnership is all about in, in, in Africa. We still struggle with collaboration. I think so we, we, we keep competing against each other instead of seeing, us, uh, seeing each other as an anchor. You know, yeah. as a support. Um, 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 you know, and for me, when when I uh, I just recently joined um, the the um, Digital Africa as, uh, as as an ambassador for one of the program, and the first time I came across Digital Africa was we, we were speaking. I was speaking on an event in 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 Ghana, and, and they were talking about how the support. Um, um, ESO, uh, entrepreneur support organization, innovation support organization, or institution that support, support startup entrepreneurs. Um, my biggest question to have, because we happen to sit on the, uh, the CEO on, on, on the panel was, how do you measure this support? Because entrepreneurs, when we, when we look at how investment work, right? Inve investors, they, 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 for them to be able to invest on startup, they make sure that they are ready. They make sure that they have to do a due, 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 due diligence. How do you do, how, when you fund this organization, how do you measure if they are intentional about entrepreneurship? If they, if they, if they are really looking at putting together all the bits and pieces, um, uh, you know, uh, to, to support entrepreneurs. Is there not a possibility, not a way that we can start looking at, okay, you know what? For, you, for us to be able to support you as an organization, Right, we need to start, we, you need to prove to us that you're, you're bringing in another partner. You're bringing in someone else that you can work with, even whether it's within your country, within your community, or across the border, all right? Mm -hmm. This so that we can start understanding the power of how partnership work. When in, in, in Africa, we, we, when we see partnership as a competitor, we see someone has coming to take our business, but of course, these are things that happen. But, because, but if we have in the right education, the right mindset, the important the role that ecosystem building play, who the role that ecosystem players play, the role, the, 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 the role of uh, ecosystem enablers. If we come, if we understand that being an ecosystem enabler is first of all a, a voluntary um, uh, job. It's not, a, it's, not, yeah. it's not a monetary, because we, we, yeah. it's something that you volunteer your time, you volunteer your energy, you volunteer your knowledge, you volunteer your skills to solve the, the various problems that our society face with no money attached to it. Until we start mm -hmm. understanding this difference, we start understanding this world, then we, we will still be struggling with, uh, with, with, with collaboration and partnership within, within the company. Hence, set up yeah. a startup have come up with various ways of how we could create, we could, we could do, you know, trust, we could be collaboration. We first of all brought in, I'm sure you know, if you know the Global Startup Awards, right? Um, mm -hmm. That was originally from Denmark. Uh, uh, oh, no, I can't hear him anymore. It's okay, hold that thought. Um, <laughs> so. No, but it I think he's yeah. making some really good points, actually, because um, yeah. especially what he was saying with the mindset, I think that's really important. If there, if the mindset's not there, you won't change anything. And it's not about the startups only. It's also about established corporates. Um, if true. they want to change yeah. anything in their system and their, how they're doing business, it's, it's, it's 
from from the top they have to have the right mindset um, basically mm -hmm. to be able to do that and also i think i mean um yeah i'm i really yeah, I have difficulties to speak for uh, the African market, but from what I mm -hmm. hear um, uh, is that you can probably ecosystems, I think ecosystems can um, often like start or scale through um, businesses that see this need. So startups mm. themselves, individuals that yeah. want to build a business, they are the first to um, yeah, actually engage others that they know, ah, okay, I know another startup or another business that I could learn from or that I, um, that would make sense to, to, to um, uh, talk to. So I think that is often just the starting mm -hmm. point for an ecosystem to, um, to develop. But of course, if you, if you have that issue with um, competition, um, yeah, it's it's then again a mindset thing that all, that has to change in the first place to be able to see, ah, okay, no, that is not my competitor, or maybe it is, but I can still talk to that person or that business and can still see where we can like uh, maybe have collaboration opportunities or just learn from each other because very often it's a competitor, but also not 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 really or not in every sense because you have your specific product or a certain way that you're approaching it or a certain specific market or service around that so um i think um and that of yeah it's 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 good if you can see that or if you if you can like try to get into that perspective that it provides more opportunity than risk to do that yeah, um, might, yeah. I, might I add to what Kevin actually um, um, took the words out of my mouth? <laughs> because, um, like I said, I am, I, though, although resident in London, I am, I, yeah. I started a B2B marketplace in, in, in Nigeria to be specific. And what he has said is very, it, it's on point, it's on point. I, I would go further to, to say this, right? Ecosystems on a on a formal perspective, from a formal perspective, is very much lacking in, in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, Nigeria. However, there is a very strong informal ecosystem. Mm. And that informal ecosystem is actually what businesses in Africa try to tap into. The formality of that ecosystem is what is lacking because that mm. informality makes it such that it's everything boils down to your interpersonal relationship with the people within that informal system. So that, yeah. what I'm, um, that's my perspective or my, my, my experience from, from um, so far in the journey that we've, we've um, gotten. And um, from a formal perspective, most, well, myself, I would say, who live in the diaspora, I tend to look for that ecosystem in Europe. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is a, um, I like to add. Yeah, yeah, no, I see that. Yeah. But um, just a quick uh, question uh, to, back to you. Um, if you say informal ecosystems, it's rather um, businesses that like have an informal information flow between each other talking about challenges and there is no kind of like institution initiative behind mm. it providing anything like training or support in any other sense right right that informal man to man person to person yeah. to lady who have known themselves one way they'll bumped into themselves yes they, they do tap into that that um, circle um never formalized Tap into it in the sense of um, you know, needs and requirements, and yeah, a very much informal setting. Yes, and actually, what what Ek is talking about is so true, because knowledge transfer from mentor to mentor, peer to peer, non organizational support and engagement actually exists in the African setup. So even if you look at the ecosystem from from a closer lens or constrained lens, you'd realize there's actually a form of support and kind of collaboration that's happening. Now, I want to move to a very critical question because you talked about um, mindsets and even that's what McKevin hit on very hard and very clearly. Now, after COVID, definitely mindsets shifted. Um, in, just from your experience on your side, um, 
uh, I mean, what, 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 what did you notice that changed uh, when it came to looking for opportunities and what opportunities came after that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, good question. I think, especially uh, um, in terms of remote work, for example, basically. I mean, that is something that also we individually notice, but I think it's also a very important and vital point in the business world um, or in ecosystems that um, remote work and the new like working experience that came with digitalization, with working at home, with um, using new tools, et cetera, that this brought a lot of new opportunities, um, alternative and new ways of hiring because you are not limited to, I don't know, your local town where mm -hmm. you're based to hire people because um, in Germany, there is a, a big problem of hiring at the moment because there are just less people and more jobs for in a lot of um, markets. And um, this is kind of a really huge opportunity for a lot of businesses that were formerly um, on the very locally based and can now open their um, jobs and hiring um, across even uh, Europe or abroad, um, which is an opportunity on both sides, of course, for you as an individual that wants to work somewhere or someplace else, which is not that easy if you have to move, etc. but also for the businesses um, seeking um, new hires. Um, and then, of course, also working experiences um, in terms of what we have now. I mean, um, I'm not sure if uh, you did this kind of like made up virtually before COVID already. Um, I mean, a lot of networks did or ecosystems, but also a lot of them didn't. They were very locally focused. Um, and now it's so much more inclusive. You can open a lot of events for people that couldn't have joined before. And that, of course, also opens new markets and opportunities for businesses that work in that environment, that work with events, that work with um, networks that can now spread wider across um, and not like are not limited to um, a local perspective or a, a local base. Um, and then, of course, because we are concerned um, about innovation and specifically um, disruptive innovation, so new, really new ways of think, new um, ways of thinking, new products that um, disrupt a market or a section, and disruptions, disruptions such as COVID um, are creating that space for entrepreneurs, for innovation, because um, yeah, new opportunities evolve. Um, there are uh, new needs uh, that you can fulfill or that you can um, answer. Um, so I think there are huge expansion opportunities in new fields that are trending now also because of COVID, such as AI or metaverse or um, trends and discourses um, like that, which are, yeah, basically well yet to fully understand for most people, me included. Um, but yeah, with it, there's also yeah, new markets, new opportunities um, that can be solved or with that challenges that can be solved by businesses. Mm, I also think that there lies an opportunity um, in, in downturns such as COVID because you can come out stronger. Um, you can um, use it as an opportunity to, to get re more resilient in the future for other shocks or other disruptions that may come. Um, so I think there are, you can build kind of more an adaptive, uh, more adaptive way of uh, making your business. Um, so I think that would be an opportunity as well. And also, I think with COVID came, at least from a European perspective, this whole sustainability concerns, also from the investors um, side. Uh, so I can imagine that um, all like a crisis such as COVID-19 could be could, could foreshadow what a climate crisis could look like in the future so um, this could be a vast opportunity as well for businesses to step into that um, area and um, yeah adapt now and think their business through systemically right now then transforming it later which is always more difficult so this would be yeah the 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 opportunities that we can see in our in our network or within our startup system. I think from the shift comes um, the ability to maintain and to sustain an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, how 
But what tools do we have? What tools would you say you've seen have worked in your ecosystem that has helped you be able to measure the sustainability? This is to, as in the transformation. Uh, is there a way you can measure this as transformation in an ecosystem? <laughs> really difficult. Um, yeah, it's always difficult to, to measure anything in terms of sustainability, sustainable trans a, a transformation in general or impact in general. It's just really difficult. So I think that's a challenge and a, and a problem in, in that market. Um, there is also not a, a specific definition and not a one fits all approach. Um, so I think it also depends what do you mean with a sustainable transformation. Um, so for us or for the Impact Festival, we define it as a long lasting and systemic approach on how to build, um, how to uh, structure and how to lead a business. And that means in terms of um, social aspects, in terms of economical aspects and in terms of um, um, ecological aspects. And um, all these three issues must be addressed. And there are, of course, various possibilities on how to work on which area. Um, and I guess also a big factor is who are you? Are you a startup? Are you an initiative? Are you an SME? Are you a big player and established corporate? Um, that, of course, makes it more easier or more difficult to measure your, your impact or your transformation. Um, but what we come across, of course, in I'm not sure, but Germany, of course, is a land or a country of certification. So everything is about the right certificate that you have to show in the right moment. Um, so there is a lot of certification uh, stuff on the market. There is um, the B Corp certification. It's basically, it's actually an American um, uh, founded uh, certification process, but this is um, a certification that is trending at the moment, um, which gives you, or they basically measure along of a set of um, extensive questions, um, these three areas, social, economical, and ecological aspects of um, um, your company and how you are moving forward. So you do a basic um, certification process at the beginning, you get a certain score, and then you re-evaluate, I think, every year or every two years. So you can see a pro progress there um, within the score that you achieve because you um, also get um, hints and support in how you can now um, um, better your score or how you can um, improve the things that you're already doing. So something like that of course can measure how you sustain uh, sustainably transform your your company and then of course there are yeah a lot of other certificates um on the market there are typically co2 footprint calculations um uh, which are used a lot at the moment and um, sustainability reportings are a huge uh, topic in germany as well um because a lot of companies or it's rather a transparency thing i think it's um it's is a trend or that's a good one to be more transparent as a business and to communicate transparently what you're doing or what you're not doing so sustainability reporting um, is a huge factor more and more established corporates um, um, promote or um, um, print or uh, yeah, have their sustainability reportings for um, their, their audience their the world to see what they are doing their efforts um, and then, of course, another possibility to measure are ESG ratings, which are also fairly new and is also a complicated or complex topic to dive into. But um, yeah, they are also assessing these impacts of environment, social and governance factors on a company, but then also the company's impact on the outside of the world. Um, so these are possibilities of measuring as well. Um, it's really difficult and complex. I'd say we did, for example, a measurement of our own um, footprint of the Impact Festival, for example, to see what where do we stand, what do we have to do in the future to, to be better in that um, sense. And um, yeah, it's really difficult to, to, to measure that because it's very qualitative. We have to do data analysis. We have to see how is the demand developing. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really difficult. But I hope that with the complexity of the 
whole lot of tools that we have now at the moment. Um, I, I hope that is evolving into um, um, some um, tools and some that we have like as best practices at the end so that we can, um, yeah, be a bit more efficient in that term and that you are not so lost in the uh, um, yeah, world of tools because there are so many certifications, so many options to, to measure something, but it's really difficult to, um, to compare these certificates, to compare these measurements. So I think for us, the most important step is to do something rather than do nothing because we are afraid that it's not enough or that you that you don't have the whole certificate or whatever. It's rather than um, like be transparent about it and try to do the first step and um, start with a CO2 footprint where you just like measure your, your energy consumption and that stuff and then go from there. So I think that would be maybe the, the advice or the, the tip. <laughs> Great. Now we're almost going towards the end of our talk. And I just want to give you a few minutes just to just share about how the Impact Festival has evolved over the years and uh, it's kept it, <laughs> how it's been able to keep its essence, um, uh, the advocating and also the sustainable solutions that you have in the B2B sector. Mm -hmm. Mm, I mean, the Impact Festival is still quite young. So we're um, in the third year. Uh, we started in 2021. Um, and now the third round of Impact Festival is, um, is coming. Um, I think actually that the answer is quite simple. I think that you need to be very authentic in, in what you do. Because we are, I mean, now for us, I think it's quite easy because we are a small team. Um, it's, of course, something very different if you're a large corporate where, the, um, where it's much diver more diverse and people having more different perspectives. But uh, for us with a small team, we, we are living very authentically what we'd like to achieve with the Impact Festival, that the Impact Festival is also a mirror of what we do or what we stand for. And so we are a very intrinsically motivated team. And I think that that shows on the outside as well. And that um, helps to, um, in many ways, to um, grow the network and makes it, um, yeah, also easy to transport of what we want to do or what we want to achieve of, or to transport our vision um, because we, we live it, <laughs> because we're really standing for it, because we believe in it ourselves. Um, so I think that plays a vital role. If you are conscious about your values and they add up and uh, are complementary to, to your business, then I think that is a very important um, benefit that will bring you forward. And um, yeah, I'd say that that is how we are trying to keep our essence, basically. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, there is a question that is there any annual agenda for Africa Berlin sessions. Um, Shaima, would you like to answer that question? Uh, yes, sure, sorry, I was just trying to uh, find the uh, unmute. Um, so for uh, for our agenda of sessions and the activities, you can easily uh, usually update and add all our session on our LinkedIn page. So you can definitely find any our uh, any upcoming activities. That's the first place. Secondly, um, through our website, when you go and register, you usually re uh, receive uh, the newsletter with all the updates and the and activities we are doing um, uh, through the Africa for Land Network. Um, uh, one of the plans that we usually every month we have a meetup, a Wednesday meetup like this one exactly. So we usually announce when exactly it will be uh, the session or the meetup Wednesday. And also we have some networking activities or a session like meet the ambassadors or expert session where we focus on a specific uh, topic or a specific sector to discuss. Um, all these activities, you can find it on the either LinkedIn or through the newsletter we sent uh, for uh, the network. I hope I answered your question, Mustafa, or 
or if I need like more clarification here. Yes, you have, you've satisfied this question. Okay, I know there's some entrepreneurs in the house and we've been hearing all about the enablers. Um, I just want to open it up for any entrepreneurs here. Um, uh, what has been, what has your experience been in terms of support? And what do you feel that support is like? So you guys are being shy today. It's open. All right, okay, I may speak. Um, mm -hmm. Not whatsoever. <laughs> Let me say, none whatsoever. That's the reason I, 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 I keep my eyes open uh, for programs or events such as this. Nice and sweet. So basically what you're looking for yeah. is that, that reach out, that um, connection. That's what's lacking so much. Yes, yes. You never know where help could come from. Um, and That's true. I, I didn't like the point you made you made earlier on about um, the the crave or the the crave for investments, which mm. which mm. which is may not necessarily be what a company needs. Mm. So I think that the ability to spread one one's wings and um, yeah, see what comes up. You know, you never know. It may not be. An investor's purse that one needs it could be uh help, help yeah comes in different forms yeah, yeah. definitely i mean that's what yes. you said right with the partnerships i mean it's like uh, partnerships can look very different ways and um yeah the answer can, can cannot only be the investments it can be one but it's not the only one there can be different partnerships mm -hmm. that are non-monetary that can help you grow and go forward as well. So yeah, I see that point. Mm -hmm. Kevin, you want to say um, something? Just to, just to add, um, I go EK, if I may call. Yeah, uh, call me Ike. I, I, think, I think that they, they, they I, I want to agree with you, but I also would, from, a, from an enabler perspective, think that they just saw um, many opportunities that are out there. Um, and I will pick on Linda, but you're right to say not ever because the brutal truth, that was what I was talking about even before my connection occurred, is the fact that the, the people are really within the country are really not intentional about entrepreneurship, right? Um, and so when you have, you, I, I, keep, I always question, have this question is, what is the role of incubators and the hubs? Right, are they really, especially, are they really doing what they're supposed to be doing? It's good to have so many of them, but how many are really intentional enough could, that could sit and say, we, we, have, we, have, we have successfully, people like I, with your, with your, with your ideas or with, with your project, we've successfully taken them from one step to another. But I will also come back to you, I, um, and this is where uh, one of our role, if you look at my back screen, you see investment readiness. The, the, the problem within, within, within the continent, within the startup space, the key problem within the startup space, is not honestly lack of, a, a lack of funding, lack of opportunity, lack of finance. The key question I always say um, it, it, to most entrepreneurs is, I always say investment uh, um, um, readiness meets opportunities, vice versa, right? And, and how ready are you when that investment knocks your door? when that investment opportunity knock your door? Where are you, do you understand your, your product so much so that if that, if, if that opportunity knock, you will be able to, you will be able to sell it and get the, the investment. Another thing is when I, when, I, when I speak or when I do some mentoring and coaching, I, I remember one incident, um, I was coaching this, uh, uh, mentoring this group of entrepreneurs and after a break and someone come to me and say, Hey, my Kevin, I really um, I, I, um, I liked what you're doing. Can you, can you, can you help me and with, with what? Uh, we are, we have this product that we're running, and we need to, we need to raise funds for this product. And I was like, 
okay, what are you looking for? I'm looking for money. And how much money? You mentioned, I was like, okay, just like what we were talking about, partnership and collaboration, I said, what do you need money for what? So we have this, we need this specific developer, uh, you know, with this specific knowledge to develop this. And I said to him, okay, have you contacted this developer? And said to the developer, listen, come to me. We, we have this project we're working on. Your skills are needed. Will you be in part of this project and come to us as a co-founder? Join us as a co-founder. Join us as a, as, 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 a, as a partner. And the developer said, no. He said, no. I said, yes, because this is the problem we face. In most, in, in most in, in, this is the problem I see it within our ecosystem. Um, in, the, in the continent. We do not understand the investment processes. We are not ready for investment. We do not even understand how to be, what the roles that a co-founder play. We do not understand what investors are even looking for. We, we want to own 100% of, of, of nothing from a business. And, and no one wants to, to, to collaborate, no one to bring in a co-founder, no one to bring in a team that can work so fairly work with them. No one understand that investors don't just invest in ideas, they invest in the team that can execute this, this uh, um, execute. So if we start, if we coming back to collaboration, coming back to partnership, yes, you have this great idea, you have this great product, you, you are looking for funds. Right, but have you looked whether there is someone that you would could substantiate those funds for skills and bring them in to be part of your team and bring them in to be part of your, to to form that co to be your to be your co fund so you guys can all you guys can all share. Investor would, would definitely fund those funds would definitely come if investors know that you have the right team the right mind to 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 to, 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 to take your initiative to the to the next level. So I think. This is, that's what it boils down again, what I said, entrepreneurship education, um, you know, is key. Ecosystem learning education is key. And that's one of the things that it, boils, it comes back to us talking about, we, 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 last year we launched the Africa Startup Ecosystem with that summit and award. And the reason why we launched that was because we wanted to bring in key players within this space to have conversation that we're having um, today. What are the various tools out there? What are the various opportunities uh, out there? How, do, what is that entrepreneurs or startups are looking for? How can help, how can incubator really put together the right program that support entrepreneurs? Because here in, in within the continent, everyone wants to, everyone wants to, want, want to, uh, want to create a hub. They want to create an incubator, and most of the incubators are not are not people that have founded anything. You can't you can't create a space where you don't even understand the pain that entrepreneurs go through to found to build a business. You've never built one, but you've created that, that space. Tell me how the money that you support you. Tell me how you will be able to support the the, the, the incubators. How? Tell me how you'll be able to accelerate. You'll be able to understand what investors are looking for. Tell me how you can take this startup start from one place to another. So this, um, the Africa Startup Ecosystem Builder Summit, and what is also to, to recognize the people that spend sleepless nights. They, they are no successful entrepreneur without mentors, without coaches, without investors, without media players. You talk about event um, 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 organizers, without all the, without, without corporate, if you know what but I mean. Kevin. I, I need to wind this session, and this is very valuable what you're sharing. And I think we can go on and talk about this topic. So I want to give an opportunity to Mustafa, and then we wind up. Mustafa, you had a question. Mustafa? Uh, hi, all. How are you? Fine, thank uh, you. Uh, um, I, uh, I think I agree with Ike and when he uh, said before that the connection. Um, as uh, I'm an entrepreneur in Egypt, I think I suffer from uh, mentoring, I think I need the good mentoring, especially when I uh, intended to access new, to new, uh, new new markets. Mm, it's I think it's very uh, it's a very important thing uh, how to connect with people in another countries, other markets, uh, to know uh, regulations, uh, credibilities. Uh, 
and I need uh, to find a platform or something like that uh, who can um, present a, a helpful uh, advice or something like that. I think it is very important thing uh, I need. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Now I want us. There's, there's a poll that's going to be shared. Um, I think it's invaluable the session we had today, and very clearly we need to probably have another session. We'll plan another session where we could all share and catch up with each other. Uh, so I just ask that you just fill in the the poll that you have in front of you. Um, and once we finish answering the poll, we will shut today's session. And thank you, Linda, so much for your time. I I wish we could borrow more time. The contributions, McKevin, Ike, all of you. Um, it's it's amazing. I wish we had more time uh, and more sessions. Um, and definitely you could connect to us through the ABN. And definitely we could organize more of these kind of interactions and opportunities. It also advises us on the kind of engagements we are actively involved with hearing from our stakeholders on the ground. And um, yeah. Thank um, you so much. Also from my side, it was great um, talking to you and also that you shared some of the perspectives um, from your continent and countries. So really appreciate that. Thank you so much. We're just waiting for one person to answer the poll. Okay. The results are out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. That was you have a great time. Till next time. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so, so much, Linda. That was really, really, really insightful. <laughs> wow. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. I could listen to you speak the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm happy because also uh, you, you saw how engaged everybody was. Um, and I'll say this, it was actually for the first time that I've seen our participants so engaged in the topic, um, also giving kind of like different views and all of those things. Um, I'm sure Eric can attest to what I'm saying. Um, but yeah. Yeah, we started was... from the very first meetup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really good. No, Thank really you. cool. And it's really interesting because um, to like see these different perspectives and also yeah. the I, it's so interesting to see the difference also of in which country you're based, uh, what you're doing, from which perspective you're looking at the topic. So it's really cool to get that engagement and see, um, yeah, how, how different you can view this topic. And But still, everyone kind of sees the need to talk about it and sees that there is an issue to, to um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, evolve the topic and see how we can, yeah, make, yeah, evolve make the topic better. Exactly. I think that would be like the, <laughs> the second thing to kind of evolve the topic and see um, from the talks that we actually had here, but it was lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. I won't Thank keep you. you any longer. Have a lovely day further and all the best with the festival. Please do reach out. Thank to you so much. From your yeah. side. Perfect. Yeah, I think we're, we'll stay in touch. Thank you so much. Um, and have you. a nice day yourself. You too. Oh, thank see you, you so much as well. Bye. Thank you. Bye.